Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome as we begin our Advent series, Flames for the Faithful. Today, uh, we're going to be looking at the prophecy candle. The series is based upon gathering around the Advent wreath. So for the four weeks of Advent, um, there will be four candles, and each candle will have a theme. Uh, today we're going to uh, look at the, what's called the prophecy candle. The first candle is the prophecy candle. We're going to talk about prophecy and prophets. What do they have to say to us today? The second week, we're going to be looking at the Bethlehem candle. We're going to talk about how do we prepare for God, for God's coming. Was Bethlehem prepared? And the third candle is the shepherd's candle. We'll see how in the story of the shepherds, how they were moved from fear to joy. So we're going to talk about that. And finally, the fourth week is the angel's candle. We're going to be look at how God is glorified as the angels proclaim the message, glory to God in the highest. We're going to talk about God's glory. So we uh, welcome anyone who may be watching, uh, whenever and wherever you're watching. We're glad that you're here to spend a few moments with us and prayer and reflection and meditation. Let us begin then with a word of prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, save us from the threatening dangers of our sins and enlighten our walk in the way of your salvation. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading comes from the 18th chapter of Deuteronomy. The Lord will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You shall heed such a prophet. That is what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, if I hear the voice of, of the Lord my God any more, or ever again see this great fire, I will die. Then the Lord replied to me, They are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their own people. I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet, who shall speak to them everything that I command. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading comes from the third chapter of the letter to the Hebrews. Therefore, brothers and sisters, holy partners in a heavenly calling, consider that Jesus, the apostle and high priest of our confession, was faithful to the one who appointed him, just as Moses also was faithful in all of God's house. Yet Jesus is worthy of more glory than Moses, just as the builder of a house has more honor than the house itself. For every house is built by someone, but the builder of all things is God. Now Moses was faithful in all God's house as a servant to testify to the things that would be spoken later. Christ, however, was faithful over God's house as a son, and we are his house if we hold firm the confidence and the pride that belong to hope. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading comes from the first chapter of the Gospel of Luke. In the days of King Herod of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly order of Abiah. His wife was a descendant of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Both of them were righteous before God, living blamelessly according to all the commandments and regulations of the Lord. But they had no children because Elizabeth was barren and both were getting on in years. Once when he was serving as priest before God and his section was on duty, he was chosen by lot according to the custom of the priesthood to enter the sanctuary of the Lord and offer incense. Now at the time of the incense offering, the whole assembly of the people was praying outside. 
Then there appeared to him an angel of the Lord standing at the right side of the altar of, in a, uh, the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was terrified, and fear overwhelmed him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you will name him John. You will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He must never drink wine or strong drink. Even before his birth, he will be filled with the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> he will turn many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. With the spirit and power of Elijah, he will go before him to turn the hearts of parents to their children and he'll be disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah said to the angel, How will I know that this is so? For I am an old man, and my wife is getting on in years. The angel replied, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. But now, because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their time, you will become mute, unable to speak, until the days these things occur. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah and wondered at his delay in the sanctuary. When he did not come out, he could not speak to them, and they realized that he had seen a vision in the sanctuary. He kept motioning to them and remained unable to speak. When his time of service was ended, he went to his home. After those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived, and for five months she remained in seclusion. She said, This is what the Lord has done for me when he looked favorably on me and took away the disgrace I have endured among my people. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Dear friends in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So today we look at the prophecy candle. What comes to your mind when you hear the word prophecy? or the word prophet. Probably someone who foretells the future, or prophecy is word about the future. Perhaps the image of a crystal ball comes into mind. Fortune tellers look into a ball and try to tell you what is going to happen. However, in the Bible, the prophets were much more than simply fortune tellers. The prophets, part of their job indeed was to foretell the future, but their main job was simply to be God's messengers, to give the word of God to the people at that time. The prophet's job was to, to give people God's words. Sometimes the words were kind of harsh, sometimes God's word was judgment, but for the most part, God's word was about hope. The prophets kind of go back and forth between judgment and promise. But always through the prophets, God has the best interests of the people in mind. God, through the prophets, is constantly trying to draw the people back to him. So God begs the people to listen to the prophets. He sends prophet after prophet, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and so on. And very few listen. And the people end up in trouble. But God always restores the relationship. God always brings the people back to him. Ultimately, what the prophets profess is hope. Yes, the message is hard sometimes. Sometimes God's message is shape up or you will suffer consequences. But overall, the message is from God. I am your God. You are my people. I am with you. 
and things are going to turn out all right in the end. Because God is the beginning and the end. God controls the end. And in the end, God wins. So the message of the prophets is about hope. Why do we need to hear their message today? Why do we need to hear the message of people who spoke 2,000 years ago and more? Because we still need to hear God's word. Their message is still relevant because people haven't changed much. The people of Israel experienced a lot of the same experiences that we do today. They were often too caught up in themselves to really listen to God. And, and isn't that us sometimes? Sometimes we get too caught up in the busy, busyness of our lives, the worries of this life. We get so caught up in a lot of stuff of the world that we don't always listen to God's voice. In the gospel reading we just heard, Zechariah the priest gets God's word. An angel comes to him, actually. A word of prophecy to him that... His wife, Elizabeth, who is barren, is going to have a child. She's going to have a son. But Zechariah doesn't listen. Well, I mean, I'm so old. We're both so old. How can this be? I mean, who can really blame the guy? I mean, that's a pretty outlandish promise. That would be kind of hard to believe. But Zechariah doesn't listen at first, and he is struck dumb. That is, he can't speak temporarily because of his lack of faith and trust. But we know how the story ends. The promise comes true. The prophecy comes true, and his son John is born. John the Baptist, who was the greatest prophet before Jesus. Zechariah didn't listen at first, but God still came through. And that's the same promise we have today. We don't always listen to God in his voice. We get too caught up in ourselves, too, get too caught up in the cares and worries of the world. But God keeps talking. God doesn't give up on us. And God tells us we can always have hope because he's with us now and forever. And everything in the end is going to turn out all right. Prophecy is not about simply knowing step by step how the world is going to end. There's many preachers out there who can tell you exactly X, Y, and Z is going to happen. But that's not really what prophecy is about. Prophecy ultimately is about God speaking to us to restore us to him and to give us a message of hope so that we can live lives day after day of peace and joy and love and serenity. The message of the prophets is clear. We can have hope because God is with us and always will be. So the question is, are we listening? How do we listen? Through prayer devotion, gathering together in worship, even in reaching out to a friend or a neighbor in the simplest little acts of kindness. In all these ways, God speaks. God speaks in relationships as well as his word. So this Advent season, may we listen to God's voice wherever it may come to us, through ourselves, through the word, through prayer, but keep listening. And don't beat ourselves up when sometimes we, we don't listen, when we shut God out. God doesn't give up on us. He didn't give up on Zechariah. He's still there. He's still speaking. And he will see us through anything. So God says, keep listening. I'm speaking. That's what prophecy is. Hope. God is speaking. Amen. Now let us have some prayer time together. I have a series of prayers, and then we will conclude with the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Light is sparked in our hearts this season, O God. Where once darkness reigned, light now flickers. It is the light of hope, anxious, happy hope, that points us toward the Christmas manger and the heaven-sent baby we hope to meet there. The light of your promises sparked the imaginations of prophets. They shared the bright news of your promised presence. When the time had fully come, you sent your infant light to warm and enlighten all humanity. Bless your church, O oh God, to shine as flame throughout this earth. 
Unite us in the strong bonds of love. Grant that all our divisions might cease. Then we will truly shine. Then all the world will see our good works and give glory to our Father in heaven. Enlighten all the nations of the world with the light of your gracious peace. Instruct all leaders in upholding justice. Open paths once clothed so that your good news may spread like fire across all boundaries. Shine as light upon all who suffer the darkness of any sort of need, O God. Enlighten all who are hungry, unhealthy, or unloved. Brighten the discouraged and the grieving. Shine in us and through us to accomplish this necessary work. Bless this church to be light to both its members and the surrounding community. Burn in our midst to purify us. Brighten in us the flame of faith. Enlighten our leaders with wisdom and drive. All our prayers we place in the manger, O oh God, anxious to see your promises fulfilled. In the name of Christ our light we pray. Amen. And now let us pray together the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. I'd like to thank everyone who is uh, joining us virtually. We also will be here 6.30 tonight. In fact, 6.30 the next three Wednesday nights. Um, I will again be doing the Facebook Live at noon, which will be uploaded to YouTube. But we also will be here Wednesday nights at 6.30. So anybody's welcome to join us in person as well as online, whichever uh, is your preference. So may everyone have a blessed week. Keep listening for God's voice. God keeps speaking. God keeps speaking words of hope. <laughs>